بسم اللہ والصلاۃ والسلام على رسول اللہ رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتمم بالخير lesson number 19 in this lesson we are going to discuss about form number 3 which is fa'ala we have already completed form number 2 and form number 4 Which one is form number two? Fa'ala, you fa'ilu. Fa'ala. Yes. Tafailan. Excellent. And what? Which one is form number four? Af'ala, you fa'ilu. Ifalan. Excellent. So we have learned these two and four, and they are the most important forms. Uh, they are used the most in the Quran. However, we have to learn all of them so that we are able to understand the whole Quran. So now we move on to. Uh, and that is because the sheikh himself decided to do to go with form number 2 and 4 and now we move on to form number 3 so form number 3 is fa'ala okay what is extra over here you know when we say mazid fi that means that there is always one extra letter in the root letters so what is extra over here and the alif was the alif fa'ala. yeah alif yeah alif always comes in the middle and it is always empty it does not have any haraka on it so that's why we call it alif it never comes in the beginning of the sentence or the beginning of the word so fa ain lam these are the root letters but when alif is added to that then it becomes from number 3 it is fa'ala so fa'ala you fa'ilu mufa'alatan so as we can see over here Uh, this is the masdar and we know that the masdar are fixed for the derived forms of the verb and we also know that these verbs they are also or these forms they are also named after the masdar so for example when we say form number 3 we can also say that form number 3 is mufa'ala mufa'ala so uh, what is very what is common between form number 2 3 and 4 that mudari always starts with you Mudari always starts with you. For example, we have fa'ala you fa'ilu taf'ilan. Now we have fa'ala you fa'ilu. So we also have you over here, and then we have mufa'alatan, and then we have af'ala you fa'ilu if'alan. So we can see over here that the mudari starts with you, and it is only limited to form number two, three, and four. Please remember that mudari starts with fatha. The rest of the abwab it always starts with fatha but when we talk about form number 2 3 and 4 the mudari starts with dhamma as we can see over here so this is the pattern as we can see here and here is the example that we are going to follow so the example is jahada yujahidu mujahadatan jahada yujahidu mujahadatan um, to strive so this is our form that we are going to discuss in this lesson Now as we know that we always uh we we need to know that whether the form the derived form has one masdar or two. Do you remember which verb form has two masadir? The derived form which one has two masadir? Form number 2. Form number 2 has two masadir. Fa'ala yufa'ilu taf'ilan wa taf'ilatan. Taf'ilan wa taf'ilatan. Example, for example, we have sabbaha yusabbihu tasbihan. And we have samma yusammi tasmiyatan. Hiyya yuhiyi tahiyyatan. So that one has two. And this also from number three also has two masadir. Mufa'alatan wa fi'alan. What are those? Mufa'alatan wa fi'alan. So as we can see over here. جاهد يجاهد مجاهدة و جهادا. You know we know these both of these words, جهاد and مجاهدة. So both of them are the مصادر of form number three. جاهد يجاهد مجاهدة و جهادا. Sometimes for, uh, this مصدر is used and sometimes this مصدر is used in the Quran. However, this is the most common and this is also used. For example, نادى ينادى 
munadatan wa nidaan nidaan is more common which is also used in the quran so we have to see sometimes that whenever you see a word that is on the pattern of fi'alan or fi'alun that means this is also the masdar of form number 3 is this clear sometimes you word you sometimes you might hear the word nifaq nifaqun yeah some people we they have nifaq so we have nafaqa yunafiqu munafaqatan wa nifaqan similarly we have kitab did you notice that kitab is also kataba yukatibu mukatabatan wa kitaban so kitaban is also so any word that you look on the must must uh, on the pattern of fi'alun that means this is the master of form number 3 even though it's not used a lot however this is also one of the master of form number 3 Now if you see here we have learned form number 2 already in form number 2 we know that there is extra tashdeed or we can say there is extra ain al kalima so it is fa'ala yufa'ilu and al masdar is taf'ilun fi'l al amr is fa'il and ism al fa'il is mufa'il and ism al maf'ul is mufa'il and as we know that this is a rule of thumb we can say that in these abwab the doer is always with kasra the second last root letter and ism al maf'ul is always with fatha and this is when we talk about the second last letter and today's bab is what fa'ala so what is extra over here alif fa'ala yufa'ilu ism al fa'il al amr will be fa'il and as we can see over here that it has two masdar it has fi'alun wa mufa'alatun and we have mufa'ilun and mufa'alun as we know Ismul fa'il will be always with kasra and uh, ismul maf'ul will be with fatha the second last letter okay um and we have also learned the fourth form which is af'ala so we know that here uh, hamza is extra so this is hamza why we call it hamza uh, because alif has fatha on it so whenever alif has fatha on it or kasra on it or dhamma on it then we don't call it alif we call it hamza even if it has sukun on it we will call it hamza af'ala yuf'ilu if'al so if'al is the masdar af'il is fi'l al-amr muf'il and muf'al so this this is ism al-fa'il and this is ism al-maf'ul so now form number 2 already finished form number 4 already finished and form number 3 as we uh, we are we discussed that we will complete it inshallah in this lesson so what is common over here al-mudhari starts with you dhamma yeah dhamma excellent and in 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 only these uh, three uh, abwab and similarly ismul fa'il and ismul maf'ul they start with mu they start with also dhamma so these are the small things that we need to know so even if it's ismul fa'il or maf'ul they also start with dhamma as we can see here mu and mu okay characteristics of form number 3 it has only one characteristic not a lot what is that it is reciprocal what does that mean or it can be collective action verbs of this form usually show an action being done with another person or group so basically one person is doing or performing an action on the other person or the other group and it is always transitive uh, that means it is al fi'l al mutaaddi and it always needs an object so the only thing that we need to remember or the only quality that or the characteristic that this form has it normally involves two parties or two persons one is generally the active or the receiver of the ex, uh, the doer of the action and the other is normally the passive which is the receiver of the action however it always involves how many persons two how many groups two yeah so there has to be one person against the whole group or it can be one person against the other person or it can be the whole group against one person so one is generally the doer of the action and the other is generally the receiver of the action however it can be reciprocal that means both of them can be the doer of the action and both of them can be receiver of the action okay we have a surah in the quran 
And the name of the surah is on the pattern of uh, the name of the masdar of form number three. Do you remember the, which surah of the Quran? I can give you the hint. It's uh, it starts with jim, dal, and alif. Jadala. Yeah. Mujadala, yeah, Mujadala. Okay, so Mujadala, as we know that there was uh, there was a kind of bit of dialogue between uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then there was a lady. So that's why it is called Mujadala. Okay, now one more thing that you need to remember something very interesting in the Quran, and it refers to only when we talk about the masdar of uh, the names of the surahs. So it can be Mujadala, and it can be Mujadila. And please remember, it refers to only when we talk about the names of the surahs of the Quran. So when you are referring to the surah of the Quran, in, in some masahif you can find it with Mujadala and it can also be Mujadila. And similarly we have a surah that is called Mumtahana. So sometimes it is called Mumtahana and sometimes it is called Mumtahina. Okay, when we reach that bab, we will discuss about that. However, this one, so but the most common that we need to remember is with fatha, the master is with fatha, which is mufa'alatun, mufa'alatun, and we have mujadalatun. However, if you see it in the Quran, uh, don't be confused because there is a possibility that it can have fatha and it can have kasra. Now, if we look, if we look at the the main verb or the base verb or the verb that has three root letters, it is qatala, qatala, that means to kill. But when we bring it into form number three, it becomes qatala. That means to fight. So normally when there is a fight, fight is between two persons or it can be between two groups, right? Sometimes a person might be fighting with himself as well. It's like in, with his inner self, uh, there's something different. But uh, normally it involves two parties, one party being active and the other party being the receiver of the action. Now in the Quran we have yuqatiluna fi sabilillah. فَيَقْتُلُونَ فَيُقْتَلُونَ Okay, يُقَاتِلُونَ Now, we also, you need to notice that in, in the Mus'haf, sometimes we have the long fatha, or we call it standing fatha, and it is only restricted to the writing of the Qur'an, that instead of alif, we find sometimes in the Qur'an, we find this standing fatha, or we find this long fatha. For example, we have Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So whenever you see in the Quran Alameen, you will see that on Ain there is a long fatha and it is not like Alameen, it's not written like this. It is written with the long fatha. So please remember that whenever you see this long fatha, it equals what? It equals Alif. It equals Alif. So, يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ They fight in the cause of Allah. فَيَقْتُلُونَ Yaqtuluna is from Qatala Yaqtulu Yaqtuluna they kill Fayuk Wayuk Talun Wayuk Talun and they are killed. So what is the difference here? Yaqtuluna Wayuk Taluna. What is the difference between these two? Please tell me quickly. Yeah uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dhamma, okay. So what is the difference between these two? Uh, it, uh, yeah. Yes, they, they kill. They kill. Okay. Uh, they are killed. They are killed. So this is active and this is passive. This is active and this is passive. Okay, what is the difference between yuqtaluna wa yuqateluna? What is the difference between these two then? Yuqtaluna is the passive form of verb form number one. Yuqateluna is the active form of form number three, as we can see over here. Qatala yuqatilu, yuqatiluna. So if you look at the translation, yuqatiluna, they fight. So this is form number three. Yuqatiluna, they fight. Fi sabilillahi. So this is form number three, and this is form number one. Fayaqtuluna, and they kill. Wa yuqtaluna, or they are killed so you need to be very careful whenever you see dhamma whenever you see dhamma on mudare 
there might be a confusion that whether it is uh, from number two three or four however if you pay some extra attention you will be able to figure out that there should be one extra alif or there should be extra tashdeed or there should be extra uh, uh, what, what what is in the from number four what is extra there has to be extra hamza so if you find any of these that means that this is from number two three or four basically this is two and this is three and this is four if there is no alif if there is no tashdeed and if there is no extra hamza that means this is this is the passive form of the mudari this is the passive form of the mudari is this clear okay excellent there is another characteristic of this bab which is not very common however since uh, we are like focusing on the quran and we know that uh, baraka is used in the quran a lot barakna so sometimes verbs of this form might have a completely new meaning from their triliteral root so triliteral root is baraka baraka means to kneel down or to bend okay baraka um, it's not used in the quran however it is used in the hadith as the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said idha sajada ahadukum fala yabruk kama yabrukul ba'ir when one of you prostrates yani when he does sajda he should not kneel in the manner of a camel so what he is supposed to do basically well yada yadayhi qabla rukbatayhi what he should do he should put down his hands before his knees so that's the hadith that whenever someone kneels down and prostrates he should put his hands first and then his knees okay so baraka yabruku baraka yabruku and it refers to the kneeling down of the camel okay the hadith as i told you idha sajada ahadukum fala yabruk kama yabrukul ba'iru but when I, when we take it to form number 3 it becomes baraka that means to bless baraka that means to bless as we make dua to the to our brothers or sisters or our brothers in islam we say barakallahu feek right barakallahu feek that means may allah bless you so baraka means to bless as we can see over here wanajaynahu walutan ila al-ard allati barakna fiha lil alamin do you notice over here alamin so here we have the a long fatha which basically equals alif this basically equals alif and we saved him and lut alayhi salam and brought him to the land of levant that we have blessed for all people now you can see over here barakna so this is the past form and this is the last form of baraka so when you do the conjugation baraka baraka baraku and you continue to the end it will be baraktu and barakna fiha lil alameen so baraka means to bless barakallahu fikum as we say may allah bless you all okay baraka what is the present tense of baraka yubariku yubariku mubarakatan what will be the ismul fa'il mubarik mubarik and what will be the ismul maf'ul mubarak laylatan mubarakatan yeah so mubarak is basically someone who is blessed that's why there are many people they have the name of mubarak so we say blessed and that person is blessed do you remember any other word that we use mubarak eid mubarak right eid. yeah when we when we greet someone we say blessed eid so basically we say eid mubarak that means uh, may 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 allah bless you with a blessed eid so that's why we say eid mubarak okay so now we see over here jahada yujahidu mujahadatan Failal Amr is Jahid. Very simple Failal Amr. So basically what happens as you know that we drop Alamat al mudari and we make the ending Sakin. And if it is readable, uh, that means it is ready. Failal Amr is ready. So what is Failal Amr? Jahid. Jahid as we can see over here. So Failal Amr is Jahid. Ismul Fa'il as we have discussed many times that with the mudare what we do we change you into mu 
yeah u into mu and then in the end we put the mean so it becomes mujahid so mujahid is ismul fa'il and mujahad is ismul maf'ul as we can see over here so when we have kasra on the second last root letter it is ismul fa'il and when we have fatha on the second last root letter then it is ismul maf'ul is this clear so we have jahada yujahidu mujahadatan baraka yubariku mubarakatan so we will say barik and we say mubarik and mubarak right okay as sarf as sagir as we always discuss that at least we should be able to know like what is the sarf as sagir yani the small conjugation uh, what is the difference between small conjugation and the big conjugation in big conjugation for the past tense we have 14 forms and the present tense we have 14 forms right starting from number one jahada jahada jahadu ending to the going to the end right and similarly for the passive we also have 14 forms and similarly uh, for the passive of, of the present tense we also have 14 forms but when we talk about uh, as sarf as sagir that means we only focus on the past tense and the present tense ismul file and uh, ismul maf'ul and also we focus on the masdar so jahada yujahidu mujahadatan fahuwa mujahidun and then this is very interesting and this is the only unique form of passive what is the passive form over here juhida as we have in the quran idha nudiya li salatil jumu'ah nudiya juhida okay why has it changed into juhida it was basically jahada as we know and we know that the mudare uh, the, the passive whether passive for the present tense or the past tense the passive also always starts with dhamma right you know that right that the passive always starts with dhamma whether it is uh, the present or it is the past okay so it was basically uh, if you put dhamma over here jahada yeah when, when you put dhamma over here now what happens we know that alif is not compatible with dhamma what is compatible compatible with dhamma wow, wow. wow. excellent yeah so basically this alif has changed into wow so it has become juhida why it has this is juhida because we know that uh the passive for the past tense is always on the pattern of fuila it is always on the pattern of fuila whether it is uh, uh, the verb that has three root letters or it has four or five it will always come on the pattern of fuila so that's why it has become juhida so we have jim and that extra alif has changed into wow and then we have kasra and then we have fatha on the same pattern as we can see over here fuila it has changed into juhida okay what will be the passive form of qatala qatala qutila excellent baraka burika right burika burika yes and when you do the conjugation burika and burika buriku so bur, uh, burikta buriktuma buriktum so whenever you make dua to someone you also say burikta fiq or burikti fiki may allah bless you so sometimes people use you might have seen that sometimes people use the passive form as well so this is the passive form of uh, of form number three which is juhida whereas the here uh, when we talk about the present tense the alif comes back why alif comes back because before alif as you can see over here we have fatha so that's why alif comes back so it becomes yujahadu yujahadu so this is yujahidu and this is yujahadu so look at the difference very small difference when we have kasra that means this is the active and when we have fatha on the second last root letter that means this is passive passive for the present tense so juhida yujahadu mujahadatan fadaka mujahadun as we know it is mujahadun and jahid is fellow amr jahid and uh, uh, fellow nafi or fellow nahi will be la to jahid la to jahid and this is only basically for the purpose of practice jahid la to jahid and mujahadun why do we have it here again 
we have here and we have here again why that's two two masdar is that percent Mm, okay, mm -hmm. so if it has two masadir or two masdar, we have here mujahid and mujahid, but this is not masdar. Here we are talking about mm -hmm. dharf. dharf. Please remember, it's, this information is very important. That ismul maf'ul, ismul maf'ul, also sometimes it is used as dharf. It can be dharf al zaman or it can be dharf al makan. You remember the example of mudkhal? You remember? Allahumma adkhilli mudkhalan. So mudkhal as we can see over here. So mudkhal can be ismul maf'ul and it can also be used as dharf. So this information is very important. We don't have any specific pattern for dharf when we talk about the mazid fee forms. So in the mazid fee form, basically ismul maf'ul serves the purpose of Dharf. Dharf zaman aw makan. So it, it serves the purpose of. So if needed to use uh, dharf for for the mazid fee form, then it can be used only as ismul maf'ul. But then in this case, we will not call it ismul maf'ul. What do we call it? We call it dharf. It can be dharf. Uh, most likely it can be dharf al makan. Adverb of place. Do you remember this information? Uh, it seems you forgot. Okay, so please remember this information. We have a few more examples, and I think after these examples, hopefully um, we will just stop over here. So we have here, Qatala, he killed, and Qatala, he fought. So please look at the examples and look at the meaning. Jahada, he exerted himself, and Jahada, he endeavored or he strived. Similarly, we have Shahida, he witnessed, and Shahada, means to view or to watch shahad al-talfaz to watch tv khataba means to deliver a public speech and khataba we have he addressed someone directly khataba yukhatibu mukhatabatan and we have mukhatib and we have mukhatab do you remember mukhatab does anyone remember mukhatab the second person yeah Okay. Yeah, so what is the second person called? The second person is called Mukhatab. Excellent, Mukhatab. Uh, perfect, yeah. And similarly, we have Nada, he called. But when we take it to form number three, it becomes Nada. So he called Nada, Yunadi. And it has two masdar, Munadat, and also Nida. And it has two masters. Yeah. All right, so I hope um, the, the ideas uh, and the concepts are clear now about form number three and inshallah when we come back again for the next lesson uh, hopefully we will go through some of the points man important points of the lesson and then we will start our lesson okay any questions no all right barakallahu feekum subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika wa iyaakum subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik wa iyaakum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh